This tutorial is brought to you by Mixkit. Hello filmmaker, thanks for watching this tutorial by Storesium. Do you want to make your boring music video look more energetic and interesting? Well, in this video I'll be covering 7 effects and transitions that will make your music videos look dope. I hope you enjoyed this short demo because these are the effects that we're going to recreate in the tutorial today. I also wanted you to know that I've downloaded all the clips from Mixkit. You can also download them for free and practice along with the tutorial if you like. Ok, now it's time to move over to Premiere and start some editing. The first effect that I will show you is really easy to do and it can give some very interesting results. As you can see I've already cut a couple of clips on the timeline that we're going to use for this one. With these clips we're going to create something called a double exposure effect. And to achieve this we simply need to start by stacking clips on top of each other. If needed you can also extend the duration and then move over to the effects control panel. Inside the opacity section we can now select a couple of different blend modes. Let's start with soft light for example. And by the way this opacity effect is applied to the top clip. Ok let's play back and see what we've got so far. That looks really cool, let's do the other one and also apply this soft light blending mode to this one. Make sure to select the right clip and change the blend mode. Let's play back and see the results. And this one also looks awesome. If you like you can also play around with different blend modes, this can give some very unexpected results. I'll change this one to multiply for example which looks like this. For the next effect we need to do a bit more work, but this can give some amazing results. You could use this as a separate effect or you can use this as a transition, which we'll do in this demo. Ok and here on the timeline we've got two clips that we're going to use for this. In the first step we're going to create an adjustment layer, we can do this in the project panel, click on the new icon and select adjustment layer. We can just accept the default settings and click ok. Then drag the adjustment layer over to the timeline on top of the two clips. I'll shorten the duration so it will match with the rest. For the next step we need to move the playhead right between the two clips. Then move over to the effects panel and search for the echo effect. You'll find this one on the bottom in video effects time. Apply this effect to the adjustment layer and move over to the effects control panel. Here you'll find the echo effect where we're going to change some settings. First I'll change the echo time to minus 0.133. Then I'll set the number of echoes to 35. And we'll set the echo operator to maximum. Now you can already see that there's a lot going on with this effect enabled. As the name already implies, this effect echoes and combines the previous frames together. And this can result in some really cool trippy effects. In the next steps we're going to add some keyframes for opacity. The playhead is still in the middle of the transition, so we can create a keyframe with value 100 here. Then move a few frames forward and create another keyframe with value 0. And then move that second keyframe to the end of the transition, create another one with value 0 and move that one to the beginning of the transition. If I scrub to the timeline, you can already see a little bit of the effect that we just created. The only problem here is that this effect is really heavy for your machine, so you might need to render this first as you can see here by the red line. To render this, simply hit the enter key and Premiere will start rendering. And once Premiere is done with rendering, it will look like this. Ok, it's time for effect number 3. This one will also be done as a transition between these two clips. For this one we also need an adjustment layer just like the previous one. I'll add the adjustment layer on top of the two clips and then move over to the effects panel and search for the invert effect. You will find this one under a video effects channel. I will apply the effect to the adjustment layer. And as you can see this will give the video a bit of an x-ray look. Ok, next we're going to add a strobe effect. I'll put the playhead between the two clips and then use the left arrow key to skip one frame backwards. Then I'll enable the razor tool by hitting the C key or click this icon here and then I will cut the adjustment layer on the point of the playhead. 
Then I'll repeat the same step a couple of times and we'll do the same on the second clip as well. Okay, that is enough. We can now switch back to the selection tool by hitting the V key or click this icon here. And then we're going to remove some parts. You can left click and then hit the delete key to remove it. So basically we're just keeping a couple of frames of the adjustment layer with the effect enabled to create the strobe effect. Okay, let's have a look at the results. And by the way, I've also made a full dedicated video on this effect with a couple more variations. So if you want to learn more about this topic, then make sure to check out that video as well. But after this video, because I'm going to continue with effect number four. This one is pretty easy to do and it works best with the clip where there's a point of impact, like when somebody's jumping for example. So first we're going to find the point of impact, which in this clip should be here. And next we need to move over to the effects control panel and there we're going to enable keyframes for positioning and scaling. Then we're going to move the first set of keyframes that we just created to the left, we'll create another set of keyframes and move that to the right. And then we're going to create another set but with different values. So I'm going to zoom in slightly and I will also change the position. And with these couple of keyframes we've created a screen pump effect. Match this with the beat of your music and it will look awesome. It's time for effect number 5 which I call the scratch effect. We'll start here by finding a point in the clip which we can use to repeat a couple of times. I think that this part will definitely work. Ok, we'll move back a couple of frames, then switch over to the razor tool and cut the track there. And then go a few frames forward and make another cut. We can now switch back to the selection tool and then move that last part aside, we can use this later on. Next we're going to make some duplicates of the part that we cut off. We can do this by holding the ALT key combined with the left mouse button and then drag them aside. For this one I'll make 4 copies in total. And now we can attach the end part back to the copied parts. Next we need to right click on one of the parts and then select speed and duration. And then we will enable reverse speed and then click OK. We'll skip the copy beside that and go for the next one. Right click, select speed and duration and also select reverse speed. Let's have a look at the result. And again make sure to match this with the beat of your music to get the best results. I don't have a name for effect number 6, but if you do, then let me know in the comments. Anyway, we're going to make a transition between these two clips. We'll start by going to the first frame of the second clip. Then we'll click on this camera icon to make a screenshot and I'll save this as a PNG file. Now we've got the screenshot here in the project panel and we'll drag it over to the timeline on top of the two clips. Then shorten the duration so it will cover a couple of frames on the end of the first clip. Something like this will do. Then select the screenshot layer and move over to the effects control panel. Inside the opacity section click on the free drawing bezier tool here this pen icon and then start drawing a mask around our main subject. This doesn't have to be very precise, we're going to apply some feathering and it won't be long on screen anyway. As I mentioned we're going to apply some feathering to the mask and maybe also play around with the mask expansion. Sometimes it also works to change the position, something like this will do. So this one won't take very much time and this is the effect that you create with that. Time for the last effect which is a bit more complex. We're going to create a glitchy offset effect. To achieve this we're going to use an adjustment layer, the one that we already created. I'm going to drag it over to the timeline and then shorten the duration. Next we're going to make a copy of the adjustment layer by holding the ALT key combined with the left mouse button and then drag it up one track above. Ok, then we're going to add a bunch of effects. Inside the effects panel we're going to search for the tint effect. We'll apply this one to the bottom adjustment layer. Then we're going to search for the emboss effect and then we'll also apply this one to the bottom adjustment layer. One more effect to go which is the offset effect. And we'll apply this effect to both adjustment layers. Ok, time to change some settings. Select the bottom layer and move over to the effects control panel. First we'll set the blending mode to hard light. Then for the tint effect we're going to change the map black to red. And we're going to change the map white to black. And for the emboss effect we're going to change the direction to 180 degrees and we'll set relief to 5. And we'll also change the vertical offset value with a couple of pixels. I'll change this one from 540 to 535. With these effects on the bottom adjustment layer we've created a bit of an aberration effect. 
and this also gives it a bit of a VHS look. Ok, it's time to do some changes to the second adjustment layer. Select the layer and then head over to the effects control panel. We're going to enable keyframes for shift center and put the first keyframe at the beginning of the adjustment layer. Then move the center down and position that keyframe somewhere here. Then we'll create another keyframe by moving the offset upwards. And we'll make a final one with an offset which is slightly downwards. And we'll put that keyframe somewhere here. With these keyframes we've just created this bounce effect. And just like I said before, combine this with your beat and it will look like this. And again, if you combine all these effects together, you can create something like I did in the beginning of this video. Let's have another look. That's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did then please like the video. And don't forget to check out Mixkit, all the items used in this tutorial, stock video, transitions, music, you can find them all for free on Mixkit, the links are in the video description. Which one of these effects is your favorite, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks again for watching Storysium and I hope you have a wonderful day.